Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our text for this morning's meditation comes from our New Testament reading in Acts chapter 2. To brothers and sisters in Christ, today we celebrate Trinity Sunday. As Pastor mentioned, it brings an end to the festival part of the church year. Just like our calendar years are broken into seasons and celebrations, so also the church year has its seasons and celebration. Church year begins after Thanksgiving, and we open with the season of Advent, which prepares us for Christmas, and we celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus. There in the manger of Bethlehem, and what a festive service it is as people gather to celebrate. Then that season of epiphany, of light, of Jesus revealing who he is. And and then you have Lent, not such a festive sea part of this church year, but it prepares us for Easter where we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. And what a festive service that is. What a celebration. And Jesus reveals himself after he has died. Then we have, as you remember two weeks ago, the ascension of Jesus, where he ascends into heaven. And you recall that day, is Jesus near to us or is he far away from us? And then after that, last week we had Pentecost, God pouring out his Holy Spirit upon us to strengthen us in our faith. And then today we have Holy Trinity Sunday. And the the whole year, the whole festival part of the church year is focused on this day, focused on the work of God through his son Jesus, the Holy Spirit, blessings that are given from God the Father. And we take time today to celebrate our God our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we can be in awe at the majesty and the grandeur of our God being one God in three persons. And I could take time to try and explain all that, but I think that'd be better for a sermon series and not one sermon on Trinity Sunday. And I don't, I don't want us this morning to think about our triune God and the majesty and the mystery of one God and three persons. Rather, I want us to think about what that one God does in our lives as Father, Son, Holy Spirit. It's kind of like what Peter is saying in our text in Acts chapter 2. This text is happening on the day of Pentecost. Peter is there. They've got the tongue of fire burning above the disciples' head. He's filled with the Holy Spirit. He's addressing the men of Israel, explaining what is taking place. And then he says these words about the Trinity in verse 33 of our text. He says about Jesus being therefore exalted at the right hand of God. And having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this, that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. Peter is talking about the work of our triune God, God the Father pouring out the gifts and the blessings of his Son, Jesus, through the work of the Holy Spirit. Isn't that how Scripture talks about faith? About the work of the Holy Spirit being poured out in our lives? Isn't that how our triune God works? To help us think about that this morning, I brought something with me. As I bring this out, I've got to thank a professor at the seminary I had, Justin Ross. I was a pastor who, who gave me this idea of water and and cups, and I do have towels down on the table if anyone is concerned. I don't want to make a mess, but you think of God the Father ready to pour out all the blessings and gifts, the forgiveness, the love of his son Jesus into the lives lives of his people. As people, we are born empty, aren't we? Dry. We're in need of God's blessings and forgiveness, but we're not just born empty and dry. No, we're born sinful, enemies of God, opposed to God and his work. And God is is willing to pour out his blessings upon us, and yet 
when we're enemies of God, we're turned upside down and in ourselves and not able to receive those gifts and blessings. And, and there's nothing we can do, is there? To turn ourselves around. Isn't that what Luther talks about in the small catechism when he talks about the creed and the work of the Holy Spirit? I cannot by my own reason or strength believe in my Lord Jesus Christ or come to him. There is nothing in us. There is no ability in ourselves, no strength by ourselves to do anything to receive those gifts and blessings of God. And we see our triune God at work. The first work of our triune God, the first work of the Holy Spirit is to turn us toward God, our Heavenly Father, that we may be filled up with the gifts and blessings of his love and forgiveness shown to us through his Son, Jesus. Isn't that what the Holy Spirit does? The Holy Spirit, as Luther continues in the explanation, calls us by the gospel, enlightens us with his gifts, strengthens us, and keeps us in the one true faith. It is the Holy Spirit who turns us towards God to receive his gifts and his blessings given to us through his Son, Jesus Christ. So when did that happen in your life? For most of us, it happened in the waters of baptism, just like it did for Elise today. A wet washing and pouring on of the Holy Spirit and faith given to us by the grace of our triune God. Maybe for some of us it wasn't through the waters of baptism, but rather it was, it was God's word being spoken by a friend or spoken through his word as Romans chapter 10 verse 17 says, faith comes through hearing God's word. And it is God's word that the Holy Spirit used to turn us toward our Heavenly Father to receive the gifts and the blessings that God has given to us. And regardless if it was at baptism or if it was a spoken word and the Holy Spirit was at work, that you may be filled up with God's gifts and his blessings, the forgiveness and love of his Son, Jesus Christ. And though we know what those blessings and those gifts are, we also know the struggle of living as a Christian, don't we? Just like we are born empty and dry, dead in our sins, so every day becomes a battle. And there are times where we're, we're, we're directed and tempted to follow sin, and, and the Holy Spirit calls us back, and then we're led away in sin, and the Holy Spirit calls us back, and, and every time, what does God do? He's there with his forgiveness. He's there to receive us back in his love by his grace, through his mercy, that we may be filled up with the power of Christ's forgiveness and life. And we see that working in our own lives. The triune God, Father, pouring out the gifts and blessings of Jesus, the Holy Spirit, giving us faith to trust and those blessings. Yet God doesn't just fill us up to keep those gifts and blessings to ourselves, does he? No, there's people he calls us to share those gifts and blessings with. We've got empty cups here, and I want you to think about people in your own life. People who need to hear about Jesus, and, and what do we do? We see their needs, and we begin to serve them. And we share some of the blessings that God has given to us. Maybe it's something as simple as helping a neighbor carry something. Or maybe it's calling up a friend and seeing how they're doing. Or maybe it's giving an encouraging word to a child or a grandchild. And, and before you know it, we've, we've served people and it feels like, man, our strength is dried up and what does God do? He comes and he fills us back up. Fills us up for a purpose. Isn't that why we fill cups up? There in the morning, you fill up that cup of juice. You fill that cup of coffee or a glass of milk to be enjoyed. We fill up the tank of gas in the car so we can make it many more miles down the road. And God fills us up to be a blessing to people. 
And he continues to use us to serve in the lives of people in so many different ways. Maybe this week, working at Vacation Bible School and serving people. But you know, it seems like there's so many needs around us that we spend our time serving and we're left empty. And yet we see so many people around us who are in need And we feel like we don't have the ability to serve. And and sometimes we forget that it's not up to us. It's not based on our own strength, on our own abilities. But we sometimes forget that, don't we? We sometimes see all the needs that are around us and how busy the schedule is and all the things that we need to do. And and I don't know how I'm going to have the time or the energy or the strength to do all of these things. And what do we sometimes forget? where our strength comes from. Our strength doesn't come from ourselves. No, it comes through God, our Heavenly Father. Through His Son, Jesus, who died and rose again to bring us forgiveness. Our strength comes through the power of the Holy Spirit that fills us, that God pours out in our lives and our hearts to have faith, to trust in God's Word and the work of His Son, Jesus. And when we are exhausted because of the struggles of this world, the temptations that we are faced with, all the things that we need to do, it is the Holy Spirit that calls us back to His Word to the gifts of his son, Jesus, who fills us up and strengthens us by faith to live as his children. And it's all the work of our triune God. God, our heavenly Father, pouring out the blessings and gifts of his son, Jesus, by his death and resurrection. The Holy Spirit that continues to turn us back and call us back to trust in our Lord and Savior and the blessings of our Heavenly Father so that we may be filled up and redeemed. And indeed you are. Our triune God redeems you and renews you and restores you in the forgiveness and life of Jesus the blessing of his son who died on the cross for you. And yet God fills you up not just to be full for yourself, but to overflow in the lives of people. Isn't that what Jesus says in John chapter 7, verse 38? Whoever believes in him, out of his heart will flow rivers of, of living water. It's God pouring out the gifts of his son Jesus and it overflows in our life into the lives of others that all people may receive the gifts and blessings of our God. And that's where this illustration falls short because my pitcher of water is about to run out. God doesn't just have a pitcher. He has a fountain, a fount of every blessing that flows from the cross of Jesus. His love for his people was shown by his death. And by his death on the cross flows out the love of God that fills us up. And that font never runs dry. The font of Jesus' love and his forgiveness is for you and it fills us up and that love and that forgiveness overflows in our lives to share it with people in our lives. That they may receive the gifts and the blessings of our triune God, God pouring out the love, his love through Jesus, the Holy Spirit calling people to faith and he uses it through you. The church, God's people. That's what this second half of the church year focuses on. We've, we're past the festival time, the celebrations of Jesus' birth and his death and his resurrection. And now it's the time of the church where God has poured out his gifts and his blessings that his church may go out and share his word. And it will be in the season of this church from now until October with Reformation. 
It's a time of the church year where the church has the mission, receives the gifts to go and carry to the world. And what does our triune God do? God our Father pours out his blessings in your life. The blessings of Christ's forgiveness and his love and the Holy Spirit fills us up that we may be filled and overflowing with his love to share with people in our lives. So go. Overflow this love and forgiveness of Jesus in your homes, your places of employment. Overflow with the love and forgiveness of Jesus with your family and friends that all people may receive the gift and blessings of our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In his name, amen. Now may the peace of Jesus, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds the one true faith and to life everlasting. Amen.